Welcome to the Focus on Why podcast. I'm Amy Rowlandson and I ask my guests one simple question, why? Focusing on the importance of why, I share with you the relatable, uplifting and inspiring conversations I have with people from all walks of life. This podcast will encourage you to focus on your why to enable and empower you to achieve the success you desire. Have a purpose, have a plan, focus on why. Before we start, I would like to draw your attention to my weekly email newsletter, Friday Focus. Each Friday, I focus on one topic with one action arising. The link to sign up is in the show notes or head over to amyrolinson.com and sign up right now. Hello and welcome to episode 352, my 56 Reflections with Actions episode and the first one since I passed the big milestone of 350, but more about that particular episode later. Just in case you're new to the show, welcome and I just want to explain what these episodes are all about. They are an opportunity for me to reflect on the previous five guest episodes and share special moments with you that I've selected to highlight and to dive deeper on. As the host of the show, I listen to my guests share their stories of why they are who they are and why they do what they do. I ask them questions that I think you as a listener would have wanted me to have asked in that moment. And the conversation continues from there. There are no set questions that I've prepared for each guest other than the starter one, which is what are you focusing on right now? From there, I simply pick up on what they've shared and we head off in different directions every time. The spotlight is always on the guest. I sit back, I listen, and I ask questions. So these Reflection with Actions episodes enable me to be more vocal from my perspective and share with you my thoughts on what the guests have brought to the table in my own solo episode. That way, I don't interrupt the flow of the guest. So why do I reflect and act? Today's world is typified by constant motion and busyness, and it's all too easy to get caught up in the whirlwind of life, leaving very little room for reflection. However, the act of reflection, when coupled with deliberate action, holds incredible transformative potential. Carving out moments of stillness for reflection is essential. By intentionally pausing and turning your attention inward, you gain clarity and insights into your thoughts, emotions and experiences. Reflection provides you with the opportunity to examine your values, your goals and your aspirations, allowing you to align your actions with your authentic self. Through self-reflection, you delve into the depths of your own beliefs, biases, strengths and areas for growth. And this heightened self-awareness enables you to make conscious choices, identify patterns and break free from limiting beliefs and behaviours to open the door to your personal transformation. While reflection provides you with valuable insights, true growth occurs when you bridge the gap between contemplation and action. By translating your reflections into deliberate steps forward, you bring your aspirations to life. Action transforms abstract thoughts into tangible outcomes, empowering you to make more meaningful progress towards your goals to create the change you truly desire. Taking action acts as a catalyst that propels you out of your comfort zone. By taking that first step, you break free from the grip of inaction and gain momentum. Whether it's starting a business, pursuing a purpose with passion or improving your relationships, consistent action empowers you to turn your visions into reality. Taking action requires courage, compassion, resilience and connection as it takes you on an unknown path of uncertainty. There will likely be challenges and obstacles on this path, some of which may appear insurmountable at the time. You'll likely fail and yet know from these failures you will learn, adapt and grow. By continuously reflecting on your actions, adjusting your course and iterating your approach, you develop resilience and adaptability, paving the way for greater personal and professional achievements. Taking action is the transformative force which will drive you closer to your desires in life. Without action, your dreams will remain dreams. Taking intentional action is required for you to build your life of purpose and fulfillment. Reflection with purposeful action has the power to create lasting impact, not only within yourself, but also within your communities and beyond. 
Your actions fueled by deep reflection become a catalyst for positive change, igniting a powerful ripple effect that extends far beyond your immediate sphere of influence. What lies ahead for you when you choose to adopt the practice of reflection with action? So let's crack on and focus on my first reflection from episode 347, Heartfelt Connection with Jill Tiny. Founder of Collaboration Global, Jill Tiny believes that we already have all the solutions to the problems in our world, that there is no such thing as coincidence and that we each have the capacity to do extraordinary things once we understand what our genius is. Jill's purpose is fulfilled practically every single day as she moves forward, ever adapting, knowing that little things make all the difference. As a speaker, author, entrepreneur, podcaster, business coach, and as a community catalyst, Jill achieves success through purposeful collaboration and heartfelt connection. Jill believes that all the solutions to the problems exist already in our world and that it's found through collaboration, sharing that her purpose is to teach the world how to collaborate. She appreciates that she doesn't have to do it all in one go, that she can do it one person at a time, saying that it's both a mindset and a heart set, that it's a way of being that empowers you. Now, I've spoken about the importance of mindset practically every Reflection with Action episode. However, I've not focused so much on what's involved in a heart set. While mindset focuses on your thoughts and your beliefs, heart set involves a deeper emotional connection to your purpose and the impact that you have on others. It's easy to lose sight of what truly matters in this fast paced world that we live in, and we can often drift through life without a sense of purpose. However, by cultivating a purpose driven mindset and heart set, you can tap into your inner motivations and live a more meaningful and fulfilling life. Living with purpose involves aligning your actions and choices with a deeper meaning or intention. It goes beyond mere success or external achievements and delves into the core values and aspirations that drive you. By identifying your passions, values and unique strengths, you can discover a sense of purpose that guides you towards a more fulfilling life. Whilst a purpose-driven mindset focuses on personal goals, a heart set of compassion expands your outlook to include the well-being of others. Cultivating empathy, kindness and a genuine concern for others not only enriches your relationships but also strengthens your sense of purpose. By embracing a heart set of compassion, you become a catalyst for positive change in your communities and the world at large. Heart set helps you connect with your truest self and aligns your actions with your values. It allows you to tap into your emotions, passions and empathy, ensuring that your pursuit of purpose is genuine and authentic. Heart set fosters compassion and empathy towards others. When you approach your purpose with a compassionate heart, you not only benefit yourself, but you also uplift and positively impact the lives of those around you. It deepens your understanding of the interconnectedness of humanity and encourages you to contribute to the well-being of others. Heartset provides the emotional fuel that drives you to persevere during challenging times. It helps you find the inner strength and motivation needed to overcome obstacles and setbacks. When your purpose is rooted in your heart, you develop the resilience necessary to navigate difficulties with determination and compassion. Heartset enhances your relationships with others by fostering deeper connections. When you approach interactions with empathy and a genuine desire to understand and support others, your relationships become more meaningful and fulfilling. Heart set enables you to build a network of like-minded individuals who can support and inspire you on your purpose-driven journey. Heart set brings joy and fulfillment to your life. When you engage with your purpose from a place of love and compassion, you experience a sense of fulfillment that goes beyond personal achievement. It allows you to find joy in making a positive difference in the lives of others and contributes to your overall well-being and happiness. Applying a heart set is a continuous practice and it may vary in intensity from situation to situation. It requires self-awareness and an ongoing commitment to cultivate and align your actions with your heart's deepest values and aspirations. By paying attention to these signs and 
experiences within yourself, you can gain a better understanding of when you're applying a heart set and make necessary adjustments. This is exactly what Jill is doing with Collaboration Global, embracing both mindset and heart set, encouraging and empowering others to do the same. Her heart set enables her to create heartfelt connection. Next up is episode 348, Music Evokes Emotion with QJ. Tapping into the mysterious power of sound and music to evoke emotion, composer and speaker manager QJ not only connects to himself, but also to others. Harnessing music in its many forms has been a lifelong passionate pursuit for QJ as he believes in being true to himself and to pursuing what's in his heart. Having studied the science and psychology of music and the emotional response of an audience, much still remains a mystery. However, QJ believes music raises the quality of his life. QJ is one of these people in life who felt that his purpose was something that he didn't have to think about. He just knew what he wanted. He believes that he has a better understanding of who he is because music has connected QJ with QJ. He said that if it's truly in your heart, you'll find a way because you cannot not be true to yourself. You can't deny yourself that opportunity that if you open your heart, your mind, your ears to the things that are around you, you can find places that take you on a spiritual or emotional journey. QJ has built his entire life and pursuit of purpose around his passion for music. He shared just how much his mood shifts when playing different music. Music has the unique ability to evoke emotion due to the way it interacts with your brain and your body. Whether it's in the moment or perhaps it may trigger a past memory of, of events, people, places, music connects people and is able to transcend language barriers and cultural differences. Marking its 53rd anniversary with around 210,000 people in attendance this year in 2023 was the Glastonbury Festival, an incredible coming together to celebrate the wonders and diversity that music has to offer. A few weeks ago, I went to see M83 with my daughter at the Roundhouse. And last week on Bastille Day, I went with my daughter to see Bastille play at Alexandra Palace or Ali Pali as it's known and celebrate the lead singer's birthday and 10 years since they released their first album. Both M83 and Bastille concerts were so different and yet fantastic. There really is something magical about seeing musicians play live on the stage right in front of you. Music elicits a huge range of feelings, including joy, happiness, excitement, sadness, nostalgia, melancholy, tranquility, fear, tension, serenity, loss, heartbreak, compassion, empathy, so many different emotions. It's an incredible art form that has been in existence for tens of thousands of years. QJ posed the possibility that music preceded language. This is not confirmed. The exact origins of music remain uncertain. However, what is known is that music has played a key role to connect, communicate and express emotion in human culture. Musicians use music to convey their emotions and experiences and communicate these directly to the audience, connecting on a very personal level. It, music offers you as a listener the opportunity to express how you feel in any given moment as it has the power to influence your psychological state. It can calm, uplift, energize you and even provide cathartic release. It's not just feelings that music elicits. Music embeds itself deep inside our memories. Just hearing a song will take you back to a moment in time and all the senses will chime in to remind you of that particular event. Music and memory are so deeply entwined that it transports you right back to yesteryears in seconds. Memories that you thought had been forgotten. When listening to music, your brain releases various neurotransmitters such as dopamine, serotonin and oxytocin, mostly associated with pleasure and happiness and bonding. However, it can also release norepinephrine, also known as noradrenaline. When listening to scary music, as there is a heightened sense of tension or fear. This will also provide you with a thrill or an adrenaline rush leading to a release of endorphins. To test this theory out, simply watch any movie with a sound on and then replay the same segment with a sound off. It's such a different experience. The soundtrack is critical to create the precise atmosphere and environment needed for you to really connect with the events occurring on the screen. Now, QJ closed out the episode offering an interesting perspective to listen to music that you don't like and learn to like it. 
He challenged me to find out why this is the case, saying it would be an interesting psychological exercise. So naturally, I reflected on this and took action, looking into the science of music. I found a study that was conducted by researchers at the University of Melbourne, which shared that the more dissonance that we hear in music, the less we will enjoy that particular music. Dissonance being perceived roughness, harshness, unpleasantness or difficulty listening to the sound. That last part is the key, really, as when you listen to music chords you haven't previously encountered before, you're not able to process it. This essentially means that the more you hear, the more you'll like it or love it. This could be why familiarity to music helps you to like it more. One of the studies conducted by Barclay surveyed more than two and a half thousand people in the US and China about their emotional responses to several songs. They found that the subjective experience of music across cultures can be mapped within at least 13 overarching feelings. Amusement, joy, eroticism, beauty, relaxation, sadness, dreaminess, triumph, anxiety, scariness, annoyance, defiance and feeling pumped up. And one blog I discovered spoke about how listening to new and different music helps to expand your creativity. So if you're getting to understand the emotions that music evokes for you, you can help get in touch with what you like and what you don't like and what connections you have made. I've put these links to those various studies and blogs in the show notes if you want to find out a bit more. So like QJ, do you choose music to evoke a specific emotion? Are you aware how music affects your emotions? Experiment with music you don't like and just see what emotions come up for you. Wimbledon 2023 has just finished and what a disruptive one it has been with Novak Djokovic being beaten by Carlos Alcaraz and my favourite women's tennis player Ange Jabeur being beaten by unseeded Marquita Vondrasova who was only just last year a tourist in London herself recovering from multiple wrist surgery. Purpose, plan and a focus on why each brought these two new champions to their centre court celebrations and having understood from episode 349, the service game with Marius Barnard, the first thing as a tennis player you have to sort out is your own mind. I took the learnings from Marius on board and really appreciated watching this tournament from a purpose filter. As a professional tennis player who beat six world number ones, including Roger Federer, Andy Roddick and Goran Ivanovic, and won six career titles in doubles, Marius Barnard believes that there is much to learn from the mindset of a tennis player. Marius emphasises the importance of controlling one's own mind and emotions, sharing his personal experience of squandering 17 match points as a 16-year-old. Now, as an executive coach, Maris has ventured beyond the court, taking his learnings into the business and personal development world, helping CEOs, directors and managers to improve their performance. His service game takes on a very different meaning. So back to the mindset again. Maris said that often people don't perform, not because they don't want to perform, but because there's something holding them back. Ons Jabeur speaks very openly about how she struggles with her emotions and her mindset on court. She's been working with a sports psychologist, Melanie Maillard, for over a year now as an important member of her entourage. Maillard said she focuses on three key areas, the mentality and the way that the player is using their brain to concentrate and do their job. The psychology, how they're feeling, how are the relationships around them, how they can put some things away to get focused on what they have to do, sharing how they feel. And the third element is energy. Maillard goes on to explain that the core work is to help the athletes to love themselves, to respect themselves and to understand they can be in control of their own destiny. On court, there's a lot of time thinking and being by yourself. For an hour spent on court, only a quarter of the time is actually spent playing tennis. The rest is spent thinking about the point that's just happened, the point they're about to play and how the game is unfolding. You need to remain focused on what you want to achieve. And there are a lot of thoughts and feelings in your head and body constantly coming at you. Marius said as a professional tennis player, he was able to switch off his emotions in a way and control them. And this reminds me of something that Brenny Brown said that... We cannot selectively numb emotions. When we numb the painful emotions, we also numb the positive emotions. That's the case, but it's not what Maris is saying here. He's simply talking about focus, removing judgment and emotion to perform in the moment. 
As he said, the first thing as a tennis player you have to sort out is your own mind. Tennis is about reading the situation. It's about reading people. Tennis can be a a negotiation, Marius said. It's just like life. Sport is life. Tennis is life. The translation of the inner game of tennis applies to how you approach life. There is so much that we can take away from sport. Not just playing it either as a spectator. You can take so many learnings, just as I have done from watching Wimbledon this year. And my key takeaway is to focus on control, specifically knowing what you can and what you cannot control. Ultimately, it comes down to being present in the moment and consciously choosing your response to every moment. As you experience a moment in life, you assign a meaning to it based upon your values, your beliefs, perceptions, interpretations and experiences, consciously or unconsciously. This subjective meaning then leads you to how you respond to that moment through your mood, your behavior, the choices you make and the subsequent actions that you then take. These then go on to create the next moment. And so the sequence continues on and on and on. And all this happens in a matter of seconds, microseconds sometimes. So what can you control? The present moment with your thoughts, your actions, your attitudes, your responses, your behavior and your lifestyle choices. Every moment you make decisions on whether you prioritize your health and well-being or not. What don't you have control over? The past, the future, the weather, other people's choices, decisions, opinions and judgments. When you focus on what you can control, you are more able to make informed decisions and you're better equipped to adapt to change and ultimately live a more fulfilled life. To gain control, you need to take ownership of your choices, actions and beliefs. Regardless of your external circumstances, you can choose how you perceive and respond to moments. Do you feel you're in control? Are you consciously aware of what aspects of your life you have control over and where you may feel a lack of control? How can you reclaim control? Awareness of the process can empower you to become more mindful of your response to moments and the meanings you attach to them. This will help you to focus on being in control of what you can be, thus freeing yourself from unnecessary stress and anxiety. On the morning of the 6th of July, just a couple of weeks ago, I woke up at 3am with a sinking feeling in my stomach. It was a day of my son's international baccalaureate results. My anxiety and nerves were running high with anticipation and my subconscious mind disturbed me from my slumber to wake me with these worrying thoughts. However, I quickly realised that I could not do anything to change the outcome or to predict the future. I would just have to wait it out and expend my energy in a way that was not so futile. I focused on what I could control instead, my response to this moment. By mid-afternoon that day, my son got the results that he needed to head off to his first choice university. So all is well and I have to say I slept very well that following night. I'm writing about control in more detail in my book and about identifying the beliefs or habits that you need to let go of to gain more control over your life. Talking about my book leads me nicely into episode 350. I'm just going to take a moment to celebrate that milestone with you here. Celebrating milestones is so key to recognizing the journey that you go on and the journey that you continue to make. I started this show back in April 2020 and now over three years later, I've surpassed the 350 episodes. It's been an absolute joy to know that more and more people are tuning in all the time from 132 countries currently. And I would like to say thank you. I'm so grateful to you for investing your time in tuning in to focus on why. I believe that it's up to you as an individual to build your purpose, to spend your life creating purposeful moments, regardless of the circumstances you find yourself in. Five years held in captivity as a prisoner of war in World War II gave George Fleming Kerr plenty of time to contemplate the meaning of life. He kept a journal to capture his thoughts, reflections, being notes, reminiscences, impressions, criticism, commentary and work in progress or unfinished. I discovered this commonplace scrapbook last year, 26 years after my grandfather's death. Within these pages, you can witness how literature, nature and music became sources of solace, inspiration and meaning in this time of uncertainty and adversity to create George's Chronicles of Captivity. 
You will remember that blazing summer of 1940. For the British Army, all roads led to Lofa, and it seemed an unkindness that the sun should still shine on those days of despair. This was a truly heartfelt episode for me, as for the first time, I share publicly some of the content from my book. It was a good test to gauge interest, and I've been overwhelmed with the responses I've received. Here are just some of the responses that people have sent to me. Tearful and precious, that podcast was like another eulogy. I enjoyed listening to your discourse on George's Prisoner of War journal, and it brought back a lot of memories of George. I know he had a big influence on your life as he had on many others who knew him. He was a remarkable man. Apart from his intelligence and wit, he was extremely empathetic and had time for everyone, whatever their background. I can't recall a single unkind word he said to anyone. His lifelong commitment to socialism was born from a sincere desire to help his fellow human beings. He could be scathing and witty at the time about politicians he loathed, but towards his friends and family, he always demonstrated a depth of love and understanding which we should all strive to emulate. Unbelievable piece of work. Really moving, really poignant and just typical of you. Focused on purpose and why and done in such a beautiful way that I will without doubt be sharing this with everyone. Well done on that. It's a nice moment in podcasting. Really beautiful little gem and loved your presentation of it. Wow, what an incredible episode. So powerful and thought provoking. His eloquence is deeply moving. The parallels between George writing about the meaning of life and perseverance and Amy ending the episode with you don't find your purpose in life, you make it left us feeling very humbled and inspired. This gives me goosebumps. Well, as you know, goosebumps are my measure I use for a connection, invoking emotion in my listener, so I know it's truly resonated and the message has hit home. This episode takes things to a different place entirely with the recollections of Amy's grandfather of his time as a prisoner of war, all created after his death. An incredible and emotional insight from beyond the grave. Well worth a listen. Incredible listening to your grandfather today. What a gift. So my reflection with action from episode 350 is a simple one. To keep writing my book, safe in the knowledge that there is an appetite for my work. And if you haven't yet, I highly recommend you tune into episode 350, Chronicles of Captivity with George Fleming Kerr, to ponder upon your own journey and question the purpose behind your actions. My final reflection today is from my fellow book writing buddy, who I met through Sue Richardson's Write Book Company's Accountability Book group back in 2022. Charlotte Jones is a physiotherapist, naturopathic nutritionist and lecturer who has also completed many psychology programs. She has built up years of knowledge and implemented learnings to help her on her own recovery journey from chronic fatigue syndrome and long COVID. She is so passionate about sharing this wealth of experience that she's written a book to help others on their own recovery journey. From Fatigue to Freedom is a book that is fun and lighthearted, written as a magical story explaining how one loses energy through the fight or flight response and then shares with which techniques can help to regain energy by moving to the rest and repair response. From being bedridden to bouncing back to full health, the stages of recovery from chronic fatigue and long COVID were really slow and difficult for Charlotte. The first step of her healing was experienced on a sunny day in her parents' garden, where out in nature, she breathed in hope. Taking on board the many lessons of rest, repair and resilience, Charlotte not only felt believed by others that her illness was real, she believed she could heal. With this self-awareness, gratitude and appreciation for all the small things in life, these powerful habits took Charlotte on an incredible healing journey from fatigue to freedom. Charlotte's purpose is clear. It is to serve and help others, more specifically to get the word out there about how to recover from chronic fatigue. Charlotte has suffered from chronic fatigue twice now and more recently recovered from long COVID. She's written the book that she felt she needed to lift her and guide her through some of the darkest times of her life. However, what I heard Charlotte share in this conversation is that she now sees these dark times as a gift that she was grateful to have had chronic fatigue because it has given her a massive toolkit of resources. She was given the chance to stop and regroup, a reboot of the body and mind, which has set her on a totally different purpose driven path in life. Her body gifted her chronic fatigue to make her listen to what her body really needed. 
It was a catalyst that has helped Charlotte to create 12 very different characters for her book, From Fatigue to Freedom. So now, everywhere Charlotte goes, she has 13 different yet very important shadows with her. How cool is that? The body knows what to do. If you ignore it, the body will go to great measures to correct the course you're on. Charlotte spoke about the importance of being outside in nature as part of the healing process and to focus on breathing, as breathing is key to getting oxygen to the whole body, to every single cell. And this took me right back to episode 79, The Five Senses with Simon Pollard, where Simon said the same to get outside and breathe, that the outdoors is part of our DNA. And even if we have allowed our minds to forget, our bodies remember. When you go outside, you take a breath of fresh air and you do it unconsciously. Are you getting outside in nature enough? Are you focused on your breathing? Are you using your five senses fully? Get outside to celebrate and enjoy what this incredible world has to offer. Be present and use all of your senses to allow yourself to connect with nature. Remember, you only get one body to live in. Pay attention to messages that your body is giving you through each one of your senses. Your body knows what to do. It also has a focus on why. How has this conversation had an impact on you? What value have you received from tuning in? What are your reflections with actions? Please take a moment to leave me an Apple podcast or Spotify review sharing how Focus on Why has made a difference to you today. Remember, the conversation doesn't end here. To keep it going, simply connect with me on LinkedIn, Instagram, Facebook or Twitter or join the Focus on Why Facebook group. All the links are in the show notes. Have a purpose, have a plan, focus on why.